Give me a minute. Hi. Yeah. We're over here waiting to see if it actually is. It's we're live and they're excellent. Like we tried this the other night and it's like, nope. Not tonight. We need to wait. So here we are. Mm. Of course. So. 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 Anything interesting going on with you? Oh, dear God. I put like a million and one things. Yeah? Yes, but they're all going to escape me. Because that's just how it works with me. <laughs> you are hilarious. Well, isn't that how it works with me? If you know my mom, you know how hilarious she really is. Well, you know. No, I've been, uh, I've been, uh, binge watching this, uh, psychi psychologist fucking teacher motivational speaker, dude. She really has been. I have. He's, he's brilliant. He's fucking brilliant. And, well, you know, I already have a leg up on a lot of people because I've studied psychology, so I know a lot of what he's talking about already. But I love his examples in explaining the things because it's put in a way that you don't have to know psychology to uh, understand. understand it. And I, I just absolutely love it. Um, it's uh, Dr. Peterson. Um, just type into YouTube, Dr. Peterson Motivation, and a bunch of his seminars will come up, or bits and pieces of them. They also have some of his lectures on there, which are really cool, because you're actually in his classroom listening to one of his lectures. It, it, it's like, yeah. Hey, if you're into that shit, it's fucking awesome. It's great. And well, if you don't want to have to go to therapy, go listen to him. You'll fix yourself. <laughs> you think it'll fix me? No. Not in your case. It could help. But it's well, not Okay, see? I, I see. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make a point there. Well, okay. You know, one of the things I was watching today, and this is something that I know, and I try, I have used this, I've known this my whole life. Because this is the way that I chose to be, and that's something that he talks about, is that it is a choice in the person that we are going to be, right? right? We always have a choice in the person we're going to be. We may not realize that, but we always have a choice. And, yeah, I was just... Dude, this shit is just blowing my mind, some of the stuff that he's saying, because I have a hard time explaining it to people. Because I know basically the clinical way that it works, and that doesn't work with regular people. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? You might as well be talking Greek or you think you're know-it-all. <laughs> well, you know, I did study this, so I, you know, it's a good thing I'm a know-it-all, okay? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Never said it wasn't a good thing. Well, I'm not a know-it-all, and I love seeing other people's perspective on it, because it is all subjective. Because things are, are, everybody's reality is different, so everything is subjective, but if you know the core of how the human works, because what he is, is he's not just a psychotherapist, he is a behavioral psychotherapist, and uh, he, he's, he studies how it fits into society the way that I do. I don't know how to explain that. It's sociology. It's sociology is what it is, okay? So that's what makes it so fascinating to me because when you understand how the human mind works you can dig deep within yourself and you understand other people better and then like a lot of people I may understand why they get to the conclusions they do or why they do the things they do in their mind, but I know from a psychology standpoint possibly why they may have done that. Yeah. And that makes a big difference when you can separate the emotions from, okay, the science of it. Why is this person doing this? Well, because they hate me and I'm an asshole. Or, well, because this happened, this happened, and this is 
the outcome. This is how they think. And that's exactly why it's not necessarily because I'm an asshole. <laughs> but to some you are. <clears throat> hey, you know what? I treat people the way they treat me. I am open. I am, like, cordial. And when you go south with me, you decide which way we go. Are we going to be cordial or are we going to do this? And nine times out of ten, when they want to go that route, I just walk away. I find something to do. Oh, there's a there's a ladybug over there that needs to be shot. Gotta go! <laughs> Are those one bugs in the flower? Oh my goodness. Yeah, the Japanese beetles. That was curious. If you don't know what Japanese beetles are, Google that shit. Basically, all they do is fucking eat and reproduce. Fucking eat and reproduce, huh? Yeah, that's basically their whole lifespan. Fucking eat and reproduce. Rinse. Whatever and repeat. You know? <laughs> You're great. You're epic tonight. Oh, I am like... You know, it's hard to find things that appeal to me because of psychology. And I'm like, okay, you are what you eat in so many different ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what you intake, like books and, and fucking TV and music, affects you. Stop it, bud. Come on. Dude, stop. stop. <sighs> Can I have some of it? Out the window. <laughs> Out the window. Hey. Come on. Out the window. We have a... Uh... No. Crazy dog. No. The crazy dog. <laughs> Milford, stop. Okay, you're gonna have to pause it. Let me be right back. Sorry about that, everybody. But, okay, so, I, as in, you are what you eat and the shows that you watch and what you read. So, no, I don't read romances. I've never, I, I, I read maybe two romances in my whole life, and they were both historically based. <laughs> so, it wasn't like, oh, this is da 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 No, it was... Oh, I was more interested in what was going on in the background than the whole love story kind of thing going on. And I watch a lot of documentaries. She does. And I don't like things with toxic relationships or that put out toxic views. I refuse to watch the news. I don't listen to fucking talk radio. I don't need people to tell me how to think or taint what I already know. You know what I mean? Well, we have a problem there. What? So, our favorite tubs told me today that if there's ever pretty much 
anal cancer. They're going rogue. What? There is a clause where they are going to be on the news. <laughs> what? Okay, I missed part of that because you like whispered it and I don't think I caught what you said. I said our favorite Tubbs has told me today that if he ever ends up with anal cancer, we have to watch the news because he's going to try to steal a tank. <laughs> Tell him we need to talk. I have a much better idea. <laughs> <laughs> can already hear it now. I'm going to hear this very long conversation between the two of you. <laughs> Jim, no. You really want to fuck people up? Hijack an oil, an oil rig. An oil rig? Hell yeah. Hijack a fucking oil rig. <laughs> hey. I gotta ask why. Why would I'm you? I'm just saying that because, well, you know, if I ever do it, I don't want them to know it was me. <laughs> Oh, wait, they'll already know it was me. But this makes it premeditated, so I don't know what you're talking about. What? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't live here anymore. <laughs> Who are you? Do I know you? I love you. I love you, too. You know... So, I would like to apologize to everybody who likes coming out and watching us stream that we haven't streamed in a while. Aside from technology problems and everything just kind of working against me, for a fucking frackle, but you get it. Um, we've had some personal things come up and happen. So It'll be more vague than that. You can tell them what happened right. with at least my part of it. I just please don't make me say it because I'll cry. So my mom's best friend Kimmy passed away and we haven't really been handling that very lightheartedly. <laughs> it's been... Yeah, I want to call her and talk to her about it. <laughs> So I'm, um, yeah, not in a good place right now with that. <laughs> you can always leave a voicemail. <laughs> Bad joke, I'm sorry. No, it's just... I actually did that the uh, first week that no, I found out. No, because her that. husband has her phone and I don't want to hurt her husband. True. You know, she was a wonderful human being. She was a very You know, we were talking in one of the streams about how you know a real friend, and it's because it's someone that's happy for you when you succeed. And every time something good happened, she was the first person I told other than Ray. Mm -hmm. And she was always so elated for me, and yeah, it just... I lost a lot when I lost her. She did. And then there's the life lesson that I'm learning of <laughs> letting go and... Well... Well, you can say something to some degree. I don't think anybody would get, get mad about it. Ray's dad is sick right now. He's not doing so good. And... After an incident, I broke down after six years just to see him because of this incident and I've learned no matter how much you really want to go tell someone to go fuck themselves and you see them and they're where you left them six years ago it makes you rethink your choice instead of doing what I felt I wanted to do I did what was deep in my heart, and I felt like my dad needed to know how good I was actually doing. And it helped me, because I, 
I saw somebody that was less fortunate than I was. And even though they had a chance at anything they could be in life, they chose what they did. And I'm slowly learning that it is okay to let go because once you hit a certain point, when you say what you actually feel deep down inside to someone, it makes you really think hard about exactly the type of person you really want to be. Well, it's about healing. And the fact that... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. The fact that you went in there with all of this anger and you didn't you express that anger because what is anger it's hurt on fire and what was it that hurt you and i'm not going to make you answer that okay because that's kind of personal it is okay so you thought about what hurt you and you put that aside because why because that didn't really matter at this point anymore did it it doesn't because you're healing is getting over that hurt and that was your first step in that big hurdle and so that was groundbreaking for you to do that on so many levels and it was the right thing to do you know what it did it made me feel more grown up well it should have because that was a very grown up decision that you made yes and you handled it very grown up more grown up than a lot of grown ups I know. <laughs> but it's about growth, Ray. And if you hold on to all of that, you're never going to grow. Because that piece of you will always be stuck there. <laughs> it just, I felt like a teenager for the longest time there. And see, that's the thing, though. Do you realize that by. What you said to him, you expressed your hurt, but also that it may have hurt, but I still did good, right? Right. But we realize that pain is part of life. It's all in how you deal with it. It's also what you decide to do with it, too. Exactly. Because, you know what, I could have stayed that mad little girl that I was. And not heal, but, you know, something you said to me earlier in the week made me realize that it was time. It was time to step down and be like, you know what? I'm not that hurt anymore because I have, I have been trying to live the life I want to live. Well, you know what? I've had some pretty difficult challenges come my way. You know what happened, Ray? Is that the rose-colored rose glasses of your childhood came off. And you finally saw things for what they really were because that is reality. At least that was your reality. And that's what it took for you to get past it was to realize that the person that you thought that was was basically a figment of your imagination. It was me and Nana. Actually, there is one happy memory that I think you should hear, and I don't mind sharing it. Well, go ahead. I'm, I know a lot of happy memories with you and your dad, but you were probably way too young to remember a lot of them. You know what my favorite one was? <laughs> I, uh... keep remembering us sitting on the couch watching Venture Bros and we'd have these really intricate conversations about how he made like his metal pipes and stuff. Mm -hmm. He actually taught me how to make one. I watched him make so many of those. I, I learned by osmosis. <laughs> no. It was so cool for me to learn how to do that because he showed me with this hollowed out bullet that he had. Like, it didn't have the innards anymore or anything? Yeah, why do you think we used to go collect shells when we were up in the mountains? That's what your dad did with them. 
That's why he said I always get the 357s. And y'all knew the difference between a 22 and a 357 shell because he wanted the bigger ones. <laughs> you know he showed me how to make them with both sizes. I know. He used to use both of them, but he he preferred the bigger ones. Because oh, the, yeah. the 357 casing actually makes a perfect one-hitter bowl. It does. And the 22 shell, if you saw off the tip in the bottom of it, makes a perfect connector for the tubing. It does. He made me one of the most beautiful pipes you ever saw in your life, and then your younger sibling's father took it apart. Um, and it never went back together right. That's sad. Yeah, I was pissed. But that was actually one of my favorite memories with him, because he taught me a life skill that was actually useful. Well, you know why it's useful? Because the skill that he taught you about how to do all those little intricate pieces, you could make anything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Crazy. I learned a lot from your dad. You know, That's the just... problem is also is that I probably didn't help because I knew a different person than who he is today. And I have a lot of fond memories with your father. A lot of them. It was bad towards the end there. It, it got real fucking ugly. Well, but, you know... Things happen for a reason, Mom. And you know what? I... Also think I finally let go of... Your black is different. Yeah, watch. Ta da! Okay. I'm like, what is it? No, dream? that's, uh, that's how, the, how you know. Okay. And what's really cool about this? Use the black one. Oh, uh, see? Just, uh, I do photography, I don't do this see, stuff. See, I can move it. Ooh. I really work with this stuff. See, I can move it to wherever I feel like it. Or get it control Z and move it back where it was. But yeah, what I just painted was. All one shape. And that's courtesy of the blob brush. So much. But the thing that you gotta realize too is that people change throughout their life and if they don't, something's wrong. You are a different person all the time. You learn things, you change. Things happen to you, you change. You get older, you grow. And if that's not happening, Something is seriously fucking wrong. Oh, I know. I definitely know that. But then again, there are people that think that that is being grown. It depends on your upbringing. It depends on your station in life, what you are taught. Yeah, I think there's this interesting meme going around, and it's something that I talk about a lot because of the whole anthropology aspect of my life, and it's talking about how, um, it says, my wife thought, says that growing up, she thought that having a refrigerator that made, with an ice dispenser was being wealthy. Wow. And to him, it was something else, and it was something really simple. That you just would be like, huh, that's like odd. And it was like, well, what was it when you were a kid? And I think about that because when I was a kid, I grew up in a whole different place than a lot of people I know. And I grew up wealthy. So it was about maintaining that or becoming something in that class. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be a lawyer, be a doctor, be a dentist. They frowned on dentists. The one thing you cannot do, though, at all costs, is you may not be an artist. Yeah. Okay. Because you are taught to transform into something that you may not really be, but image is everything. There is nothing real about that world. Can I scream? No. 
That's like not okay. But there really is nothing real about that world. It is all about appearance and what people think, regardless of what's going on behind closed doors. I'm not okay with that. Well, you know, it is what it is. I, uh... That you would have to be there to know that that happens, because if not, you get this perfect image, right? Please. If I didn't know any better, yes, it would be a shock, but... Well, but see, that's what's important in that world, is what other people see. And it's about the gray area and finding the loopholes and covering your ass. And they taught us completely different things than the rest of the world learns. Because I went to a public school. I moved out when I was 16 and I finished my last two years of high school on my own. So I wasn't in the cushy Catholic school anymore. I went to a public school and it was culture shock to me. Was it? Yeah. Okay, okay. I walked into my junior year one credit away from being a senior. And we were learning things that they don't even cover in regular high schools. Really? Yeah. Did I walk through my last two years of high school? That was such a cakewalk. It was like, dude, <laughs> I already know all this shit. What the fuck? If I could do it again. If I could do it again, I'd have gone to summer school and graduated a year early and just straight gone to college. But if I'd have done that, I wouldn't have had your kids. And, well, you know, I don't think that that was a viable option. I don't regret the way that things went because if they didn't go the way that they did, I wouldn't be who I am. And while I don't like everything about myself, I kind of like the person I am. I love who you are. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. No, I just think if it wasn't for you, I would probably not be as good of a kid as I am. <laughs> if it wasn't for me, Tally would have been your dad. <laughs> We're going there. We I'm are kidding. going there. I'm kidding. Don't worry, Mom. It just sli it should have nah, just slid she down was, the leg. She was, before all this happened, she was all mad. She's like, I don't want to tell my dad Happy Father's Day. He's a da -da 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 -da. I was like, well, why don't you just say happy things for fucking my mom day? <laughs> Isn't that basically what Father's Day is? Yeah, it is. Hey, you fucked my mom, so now I have to say happy daddy day. <laughs> happy yes, you did it. Not exactly how I feel. I'm just being goofy. It is to celebrate the father's side. You know, I know. Our motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help. That doesn't help. <laughs> public. That's exactly what you did me out in public. You know, <coughs> Tevin brought up wanting to go to Waffle House. What? Tevin brought up wanting to go to Waffle House. I don't know if I'm still allowed in Waffle House. <laughs> you know, I'm still wondering how you were able to get back into the Roxy after your sex and talk. Oh, dude, that was fucking funny. And it was, it was Jackson. It wasn't, it was Jackson and Joe and Wendy and me. And me and Wendy were just like, it was fucking great. And we were like playing off of each other. And well, you know what? Every once in a while, you catch a woman in the right mood, she'll tell you all her secrets. It's usually not the way you want to hear them, but you'll hear all our secrets. <laughs> it's 
great. <coughs> yeah, I had Joe bust a nut. He's like, mm hmm, mm hmm. And Jackson would look at him and he'd be like, really? And Joe's like, uh huh. <laughs> Good evening. And I'm uh, working on my logo. I'm actually redoing my logo. I'm vectorizing it. It's going to be so much hard work. It's going to be so worth it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm excited. Actually, I already like how to start the top. What do you think? Yes. Like and let me just finish that conversation by saying many people would wish they had that conversation. Really? Yes. Ooh. He still tells me to this day, he's like, that was so embarrassing. And I was like, no fucking way. And he's like, dude, that was like the best advice and shit I've ever heard. Of. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, that's the problem is that people can't be honest with themselves, so therefore they can't be honest with other people, especially when it comes to relationships and sex. Just saying. Good point. Hey, you know what? You're right. You're right about one thing. I would have loved to have that conversation with you. Oh, you have. But not quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. Well, think about it. We live in a society where we're told what to think, we're told what to buy. We're ostracized if we don't go along with the norm. That we are. So how can we be honest if we're not even being who we really are? You know what leads to depression and unhappiness? That feeling of emptiness, that hole that you have to fill that you can't? It's wanting things. You know what I want? You know what I want? World peace? that and just everybody to give each other a great big hug. Peace on earth and help you make. Mm. Ah! <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> You're just having a blast tonight, aren't you? I am. I love it. It's about the first time I've really laughed in a while, so true. why not, right? Very true. I mean, we could enjoy it, too. Or maybe I'm just high, we'll never go. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you in part by, we're a 420 friendly channel. <sighs> oh, wow. That is weird. What is weird? That is so weird. I am, like, tripping on this. On the horn? Yes. I have a horn melon over here I'm looking at. I've never had one before, and it's kind of weird. She doesn't know how she feels about it. No, I love the geometry in it. Nice. I do, look. Oh wow. Isn't that pretty? Mm-hmm. That's really pretty. I'm feeling spicy, Pop didn't die. <laughs> Pop didn't die, huh? Oh, uh, dude, I was so freaked out thinking that Pop was gonna die when I Trump Trump when I Trump Trump it. Oh, you're talking about your uh, my K-pop. Yeah. And now there's three K-pops. Cause yay. Which is even better. Well, considering the girls were like, "You need to cut your K-pop so I can have one." I'm like, what? Yeah, they literally told her that. And then they cried when I actually did it. And Ron's handling the whole Pepe thing really well. Yes, she is. I don't think it quite sunk in because she still looks somewhat alive. Or maybe it's because there's two, three babies and she's like, well, I still have one. <laughs> 
You never know with her. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, well, we'll never know. They pay me like and she'd walk over there and scream for days as pay pay's gone. <laughs> We would never hear the end of it. Tell her she was abducted by aliens. <laughs> okay. Okay. That I will stick. I will stick to with you. Hmm. What's up? How you feeling? How them seeds treating you? Well, that's a very interesting flavor, isn't it? It is. I like it. It's, it's different. Like, uh, a citrusy cucumber. Right? Oh, there's the banana. Oh, shit. What? The banana's the aftertaste. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's really weird. You gotta try this. Like, mm. take some actual of the flesh, because I know you just like the juice. Here, try this. Just this much of it. There's three different flavors. Wow. Just wait. After you swallow it, give it a second and you'll pick up the banana. Wow. Yeah, did you get the banana? I got the banana. Oh, that's wild. We got a horn fruit if anyone's curious. It's a horn melon, and we also learned, thanks to Kevin, that the way you tell if they're ripe is if they're yellow and like a golden yellow, and that if it's full, if it's ripe, there's a banana flavor to it, and there is the after flavor of it is banana. That is bizarre. Oh wow. That's pretty good. It is, isn't it? The odd things you get to make your kids feel happy. <laughs> I think they definitely be worth uh, growing. Mm-hmm. Try my odd exotic fruit, guys. Is that a little bitter? Yeah, they're not that exotic, but yeah. Well, you get what I'm saying. In the scheme of things, they're pretty... Well, yeah, okay, I bet a lot of people have not ever heard of one. No. Hmm. I bet you cut it open. And, and to be honest, this is my first time. It is my first time, too. I've seen them, I'm like, hmm. I've seen Pitya's, and I'm like, I don't know if I eat that. And then I ate one, and I was like, oh, Pitya. Oh, I let <coughs> Mani go over and pick one. Mm -hmm. And that's what she picked up, and she's like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, you want to get one? And she's like, yeah, let's get one. I appreciate it. It's great. It was great. It's comfy. She likes cactuses. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you anything she thought it was a cactus fruit. More than likely. No! She's seen those on the, uh, the footy guy we watch. Yeah? Yeah. The horn? The horn? Huh? She's seen the horn thing? Uh-huh. So she wanted to try it? Yeah. Do you think she'll like it? No. <laughs> Just being honest, no. No. Well, kids tend to have a sweeter palate. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bitter. It is a little bitter. And she seems to shy away from bitter things. I want to see her reaction when she sees the inside of the blood orange. <laughs> Oh, that's cooler. <laughs> I know she's seen them because the booty guy that we watch, but... Yeah. Yeah. Gotta love food guys. 
But yeah, that's. I can't wait. She's gonna be like my booty buddy. <laughs> you know what I can't wait for? What? Today we can take him to the butterfly pavilion. Yeah? Yeah, I feel like we need a fucking field trip. I want to take her to Montan Fest. I think she would love Montan Fest. Montan Fest, huh? Yeah. I think she would too. And you can get a private room. So it wouldn't matter. She wouldn't be overwhelmed and have a meltdown. I would love that. And quite honestly, I think she would love that too. You never know with her. Matan Fez is a Moroccan food restaurant, by the way. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I, it's been around. We used to go there when I was a kid for Mother's Day because it was my mom's favorite restaurant. And it's like the whole Moroccan food experience. You sit on the pillows and you eat with your hands and they have belly dancers and tea, and it, it's the whole experience. You know, I think it would be fun to take them there. I, I think one day we should take them on a very long, fun field trip, you know? Yeah? Yeah. We'll see. I just, honestly, I'm, the only thing I'm worried about is lying. <coughs> a lot of people probably don't know is both my kids are autistic and when Lonnie gets overwhelmed sometimes it leads to a seizure if you're not careful enough so, she is so getting better with it she is and sometimes it's hard to take her out in public and other times, as long as you let her do her thing, but keep a close eye on her, she's happy. She's getting in there. She's learning how to deal with it. We've been working on it. <laughs> we play games that help her deal with it. We do. And I talk to her a lot and help her work through some of it and figure out things that help. Yeah, it's a blessing that she can communicate because that makes us a lot easier. It does. She wasn't going to talk. No. This is one of those moments I say I really enjoy music. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is that you know that they actually do music therapy with nonverbal... You think I did it on accident? <laughs> No, I knew you did it on purpose. I always knew you did it on purpose, but you know what made me happy about it? What? It was always the things you enjoyed. And she realized when you enjoy something, it's okay for you to express it. Yeah? I did notice that a lot with you two, and quite honestly, thank you. I don't know what I would have done, but the fact that I've also been teaching the kids sign language as we go. Well, see, and you did that, and I did music therapy, and she does both, so that's a good thing. Exactly. Like, she'll sign to me when she's having a really rough time, and that's when I know, hey, we gotta get Lonnie out of this area. <laughs> oh, she's funny, because she'll sit there, and she'll want to tell me something, and she'll start signing all crazy, and just a jumble of letters and be like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, no! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do when she does that? What? I nod my head and tell her next we're working on spelling. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's cute. She is going so fast and she's so sure of herself. And she is making actual letters. Oh, yeah. So it, it's not like she's just doing it. I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. I do too, and you know what? I think it's really cool that they're 
multilingual. You know, I never really thought that the psychology I learned would come in so handy. I didn't. I think it was beyond handy. for you. So, my other love is plants, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found this really cool dude that does like planting stuff and tells you about trees and stuff like that. And I was like, because I'm trying to grow wisteria again. We'll see if it works this time. I don't fucking know. It never fucking works. I've got it to work once. But hopefully this time it works. But I was watching his video on that, and then I saw one on mistletoe, and I was like, huh. And guess what? What? This was very interesting, because he's the only person I've ever heard bring it up, but he's also in Canada. So that might be why he did. But you remember when I told you how the Druids had a cure for cancer that involved mistletoe? Mm hmm Did you know that... There's two countries in Europe that are actually researching using mistletoe for cancer treatment because there is a chemical in the mistletoe that if you can process it right, it hunts down the cancer cells and kills them. No. So now they know the science behind what the Druids knew. And they're working on developing the formula that uses that, and it is a cure for cancer. And the stuff that you stand under mm -hmm. on uh, Christmas is not mistletoe, it's underripe holly. Underripe holly, huh? Mistletoe is poisonous! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, you're kidding me. No. Oh my god. So And now stop and think about that. We have a tradition of standing under a poisonous plant, kissing somebody for good luck. <laughs> goodness. But yeah, I just thought it was cool that they somebody took that to heart because everybody else calls it mythology and I'm like no that's medicine motherfucker why don't you fucking look into this because this could be everything there is a plant for everything there is a fucking plant for everything and they know it that is why there is a pill for everything but the pills don't work did you know that there is a chamber I can't remember where it is off the top of my head but it is over 3,000 years before BC that it was made and it plays the frequency that right found kills cancer Wow! and they used to take sick people down there so that they could sit in this room in that frequency See, we haven't now. discovered anything. We knew all of this, but because of people thinking they knew better and civilizing, we lost all of this fucking knowledge. Do you know how mad that makes me? Motherfuckers. Extremely. Do you know what the quality of life would be right now if we still had that knowledge? It would probably be a lot better than it is. Well, I'll tell you what. My friend wouldn't have died of fucking cancer. That's for damn sure. You know, I think from here on out, my decision is going to be I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate. You going to celebrate? I'm going to celebrate. And please don't take this the wrong way. I had learned something back when Nana died. And that is when somebody's in pain, it's better to celebrate their life 
and knowing that they lived than to sit there and... I'm still in the angry phase. I'm getting to the, well, I'm at the angry bargaining stage. I'll take these people back for her back, please. And then I feel like a shitty person for feeling that way and thinking that, and then I'm back to the fucking depressed part. You know, you grieve in stages. I know where I'm at. I accept it. You gotta go through the steps to get to where you need to be. So it's okay to be numb? Yes, that's one of the steps. Anger is, like, the first. It's denial, anger, or anger, denial, fucking, yeah, there's, you can look it up online. I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there is five stages of grief. The last one being acceptance. I'm getting there. And well, there is no time frame. How important was the person to you? That kind of determines how long you mourn. And then the fact that it was something that is completely treatable. But that's considered holistic medicine and it's not real. I could be the crazy mountain lady that makes video games. As long as I get to be the thing that scares people in the woods. Deal. Deal. Does that mean you're gonna have like those wild spooky? Means I'm gonna dress the kids up like skinwalkers and we're gonna go scare the shit out of people in the fucking woods. <laughs> <laughs> I am totally down. Anybody else want to join us? Dude, we will take our scare game to the next level. <laughs> Nobody Yes, will. and we have to have a big sign right on the property that says, Don't go in the woods. <laughs> no, it has to say, Stay out of the woods. No, it's Don't go in the woods. Yeah, but then that tempts them to go in the woods. I know, that's the whole point. Oh, yeah, okay. You were fucking warned. You're the idiot that came in here. And I'd be doing some Blair Witch shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> We'd make a mock grave. Fuck yeah, I'd fuck with people so bad. It would go down as an urban legend. And then I'd have to add that to my video game. I just have to figure out what color I'm going to wear. I think it should be green. I have a few friends that I want to steal if we do decide to do that, though. There's only like three people... I'm just saying. I deniably want Life goals, man. Instead of retiring, I'm gonna scare people. <laughs> fuck the circus. I'm just gonna live in the mountains and scare the fuck out of people. <laughs> I'm taking after one of my idols because she did that until they killed her. They killed her, huh? Yeah, Diane Fossey. Oh, yeah, that's right. She was the Red Witch of the Congo. life goals, you know. Yeah, everybody <laughs> hears me now. You're not allowed to shoot my mother. You come a-hunting on my property, I'm gonna make sure you get your butt scared to death. Dude, you shoot me, I will hunt you for the rest of your fucking life and the first thing I'm gonna figure out is how to throw shit. Anybody down? I guess that means it's a good thing that Sam and Dean aren't real, huh? <laughs> I'm a poltergeist! <laughs> She's a little pissed off. <laughs> I don't know what we did. <laughs> Do you know how hard of an urban legend that would be? That would be like the best fucking urban legend ever. Well, see, the thing is, is that how do you start it? I think that each of them is based in somewhat of reality. And what I mean by that, and we've covered this a million times, and I will say it a million more times, everybody's perception of reality and their reality is different. Right? Right. So some people may look at it as some crazy old lady that's probably senile running around the woods playing fucking Galadriel. Whereas somebody else is like, oh my god, it's Daphne, she's gonna kill me! 
right? It depends on who you are. Um, I could see you being Persephone. Persephone? Persephone. Why? Uh, have you ever seen those cute comics that this person I've been following does? Mm -hmm. You know, the one where she's like, no, no, no. And Hades is like the skull dude trying to win her over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, uh... Okay, that is total fan fiction because he literally kidnapped her. And then he tricked her into eating in hell, which meant that she had to stay there. And her mother, Demeter, petitioned Zeus and told him that if he, she didn't get her daughter back, then Summer would never come again. Damn. And so they made the deal that she could come up during the summer with her mother, but had to go back down, and that's when the winter happens because Demeter is sad because her daughter is gone. That was science. That was their way of explaining the seasons. Crazy, huh? I love how they explained it. I think it's beautiful. I think they were more poets than scientists, though. Honestly, it don't matter. Scientists, non-scientists. Well, see, the Greeks were philosophers. Boom. <laughs> and that's why everything is so romanticized. In their religion, in their art, in their architecture. Because it was about the intellect instead of other things, right? And that's why the Romans overthrew them so easily, because they were warriors. Yeah. You know what I think is the biggest travesty ever? Huh is that people were used the word lesbian in a negative connotation. Really? Yes. You know why? And I'm not even talking about the implications about your sexuality here. I mean, that's a given that that's fucked up. But there was an island of Lesbos in ancient Grecian times, right? Right. And they supposedly had the most beautiful women on this planet, and they were called lesbians. So in essence, calling somebody a lesbian is a compliment. It is. Sounds like a big one. It is. Interesting. I don't know, this world is confusing when you know history and what things really were supposed to mean. Because it's like, how the fuck did it end up here? Yeah? Welcome to a new age. No, it's nothing new, it's just a new... We think we're different, but nothing has changed. Just because technology and fashion and everything else has changed, Society has remained the same. There are a few things that have changed, but they've been band-aids to big issues. Agreed. Because we can't face those big issues because they're hard and it's ugly. We might have to accept that there might be people different than us in this world. Sorry. <laughs> That just, you know, this goes without saying, but I am pissed as fuck about the reversal of Roe v. Wade, but we're not going to discuss that here. So between that and losing my best friend, fuck this world. <laughs> right? Oh, man. Oh, it, it's just, I say that because, well, you know what? When things like this happen, you realize what's really important in the world, and... Nothing else matters. We are not free. We are not free at all. But we believe we are. 
No, we're told we are, and then we're told the definition of their idea of freedom. Yet, we pay to live in this country every year. Like, pay our government to live in this country. Taxes? Yeah. Took me a minute. Okay, why do I pay social security tax and a, a lot of social security tax for something that they refuse to give me? Isn't it supposed to be there when I need it? That's what I've been doing. It was supposed to be like a bank account, collecting interest so that I had a retirement or at least a little bit of money added to my retirement. Yet, you know, now the retirement age is, what, 75 if people live that long? And then you're lucky if you didn't make, like, hundreds of thousands every year, you get $600 a month, which nobody can live on that. Not anymore. But you sure as fuck take your money out of my fucking paycheck every time, don't you? Yeah. You're right. You're completely right. It's just hard to live in a country where money trumps everything and control. Well, they're doing a bang-up job of controlling people. We got school shootings every other fucking month. We are building more prisons than fucking education centers. We have got a growing impoverished community just growing out of fucking control right now, right? Do they give a fuck? No, they're at Starbucks enjoying their frappuccino, worrying about their fucking problems that would be like a blessing to most people. They don't want to live in this country anymore. And again, we go anywhere, we're not free, are we? But everybody's fighting about what's right and wrong. And that's the other problem is that we feel that because we have to have an opinion, we have to force it on other people and they have to believe the same thing we do or we can't be friends. And it's not everybody, but I, I've seen a lot of friendships end in the past week over stupid shit. You don't have to believe the same thing as me. In fact, I like people that don't like believe the same thing as me because you are the people I'm going to learn the most from. Right? Right. And, well, maybe if you give me a good enough argument and show me the evidence of what you're telling me, I may believe what you're telling me because it may trump what I think I know. But that's the problem, is that people don't want to grow. They don't want to expand their minds or their horizons and realize that the world is a very, very big place and that there is no way that you can fit everybody into a fucking box. And the more that you try, the harder it is. No, the more frustrating it's going to be. And that's what they're succeeding in doing, is they're making everybody live inside this box. And if you deviate from that box, you get ostracized and ridiculed. And if you can't handle that, you know, it's just ugly. I don't fucking like this shit. I don't blame you. I don't like it either. Well, see, when you, when you learn about sociology and the psychology behind how society works. You get it, and it's sad because the only way to change it is like getting a viral video. Hmm. <laughs> Literally. Really? That's scary. 
And who's to say that your change would make things for the better? Right? That remind me of what my actual goal is. I was thinking about what type of game designer I wanted to be recently. Mm -hmm. And I already told you I want to get into the horror game genre because there's not that many scary games out anymore since Silent Hill is the only one that scared a lot of people. And scary games aren't what they used to be. So I want to revolutionize the way that that and video games are made. And I think I found I found two ways to do it. Okay, I've looked at the cliches. What people say do or don't do. <laughs> Someone said I did not die. <laughs> Yay, I'm glad you made a home run. Welcome home. But I want to bring a new face to fear. I want to bring something that uses psychology to kind of get the people. Don't they all do Well, some of them mess with you with like the simple jump scares and stuff. Jump scares are a psychological thing. They are. I'm just trying to tell you that your phrasing of it, it's not you want them to be a psychological thing. You want to make you want to use psychology to make it a more personal experience, mm -hmm. right? Right. So there's a difference in you want to make it more psychological, psychological, and you want to use psychology to make it a better personal experience. But I want to bring a personal experience that nobody's felt before. And you gave me this crazy idea when you told me I should use a certain test, and I was like, oh my goodness, you know what? That's a good way not just to determine the difficulty, or how much the game messes with you, but that's also a good way to determine how not to trigger a person. Well, okay, the whole point behind it is that if you know about their personality, you will know how they're going to play the game. And that is how you keep them on their toes. Right? Right. And okay, I, I really did this no one. Fucking love that name. <laughs> Dragula. <laughs> or, yeah. He did words to that. Oh, goodness. He said, I thought, I, though I almost got ran off the road by two truckers. One tried being badass and flying through a work zone and ended up halfway in my lane. I went from 65 to 40 in a matter of seconds. Then, one trucker went from, this is my exit to, oh shit, it's not as soon as I was about to pass him. Hmm. So that surprises the fuck out of me. Usually those guys are careful ass drivers. Right? Actually, I take that back. If they're local or short range and they didn't buy their rig, they don't give a fuck. But if they bought their rig, they treat that like it's fucking gold because that's not only their fucking money maker, that's their home. Mm-hmm. Didn't Grandpa teach you that? Yeah! He went through how many trucks when, when we were there? Three? Yeah. Because he had the blue one, the white one, and then the burgundy one that Anya picked out. I thought it was purple. It, it was a burgundy purple. It was one of the, it wasn't a color shift, but it was a burgundy that had a purple hue. But 
But yeah, and I saw the price tag on those. You don't wreck your three hundred thousand dollar fucking rig. <laughs> so if I get ran off the road one more time by a trucker, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose it, and I'm letting Dark Tavern come out and play. Just be careful. They usually carry guns, and they can take you anywhere in the United States and dump your body, and they'll never find you. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. This got dark quick. <laughs> But did it though? No. Okay. Not really. Did you know it was because I almost got slammed into by a truck that I quit driving? Beth. <laughs> All I gotta say. <laughs> what? Beth. <laughs> <laughs> No, the reason I quit driving was because I was on the highway. It was the middle. It was like 10 o'clock at night. And there was a rig beside me and nobody on the other side of me. And I wasn't in the blind spot. Trust me, that was beat into my head. Never be in the blind If you can't see their mirrors, they can't see you, right? Right. And this fucker starts coming over into my lane. And of course, you should go to go into the other lane. And all of a sudden, there's a car there. And it's literally pacing me, and the semi is coming into my lane. I have two of my young children in the car, with, in the truck with me. It missed me by about two inches, and I quit driving after that. I drove where I was going, I drove home, and I have driven very, very, very little since then. I can see why. I have panic attacks. I mean, like, literally, a cigarette saved my life. Driving. Never thought I'd ever be able to say that, but fucking A, man. <laughs> fuck around, find out. Yeah, fuck around, find out. Yeah. So I have an interesting one for you. Okay. I told you earlier, but I thought it was like cool enough to bring it up. They have found that 70 different species of mushroom actually eat plastic. Like the mushrooms that you buy at the grocery store will actually eat plastic and turn it into compost. Mm, that's fucking okay. They've done tests on it on a small scale and it took a couple of months for them to completely eat the plastic. Compared to the what, 400 years it's going to take it to biodegrade naturally? Mm -hmm. Right? And this is taking it and you can still eat the mushrooms. They're still edible and no traces of plastic. Yeah, it's epic. So I guess there's a couple of different colleges that are working on devising a way to use this knowledge to put these mushrooms on a large scale in landfills. Oh, you okay? You okay, sweetie? <laughs> Poor baby. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. Come on. You're okay. You're I'm scared, okay. puppy. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Come here, baby. Come, Come here, baby. It's okay. It's okay. It was just a chair. <laughs> it was just a chair. You knocked it over. I know. <laughs> Poor baby. Oh, poor baby, baby. Poor baby. Yes, pagan cow. Pagan cow. I know. But I thought that was cool. I mean, if they do that, they're trying to figure out how to get it to the point where it can handle... The, the amount of plastic we're putting out and they're talking about trying to figure out a way that they can 
make so that people can have them in their houses. Have a compost bin, basically, that it's mushrooms that eat the plastic and you can eat the mushrooms. So you can get rid of your plastic on your own. That'd be really cool. I just thought, and it eats styrofoam peanuts too. That stuff, they eat, it's, uh, what is it? It's poly, poly, that, it's the pH. They're the, the stuff that, like, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, I know about. what you're talking about. But yeah, I thought that was badass. I was like, fuck yeah. Oh, and you remember when uh, they decriminalized uh, psilocybin? Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, that's great and all, but you can't buy mushrooms, right? Right. They found the loophole, and it's fucking badass. <laughs> I fucking love it. That was brilliant. What was it? I would have never, I would have never, well, I'm not really that into the whole mushroom thing, but... What it is is that psilocybin is what is illegal, right? Mm -hmm. And it is legal to possess and use mushrooms, but it is not legal to sell or buy them, which creates a conundrum, right? How on earth do you get them if you can't sell them or buy them? Right. So the way around it, which I thought was totally badass, is that the spores <laughs> do not contain psilocybin. So you can legally buy the spores and grow your own. And then it is perfectly legal. Wow. I, I know, kept fucking crazy, huh? I actually needed a minute to think about that, but wow. That's uh, impressive. I told you, there is a loophole to everything. The spores are living organisms. They are. Yeah. I only found out because I was looking for a, a substrate for mushrooms since we started growing mushrooms. We did. Our pink ones are looking fantastic. Oh my god, that thing is just like going. Right now. I've got a green thumb from how I Go guess. take a look. Yeah, they've grown. You're supposed to be able to harvest them in 10 days. Oh goodness. And while I've seen pictures of the ones that people have done, and I swear to god we've gotten at least 10 times of the biggest one I've seen so far. But we've also been following the instructions and sporting them correctly. No. I knew where to put them. They've got a grow light on them. And I cut the bag more than they showed you to. It's, half of it is knowing about plants and how they grow and what they need. And well, since they've gotten that big, I did what I took them out of the box they gave us for it, and I put it in a bin so it's protected, but it can keep the moisture in it. Mm-hmm. And well, the cool thing is, is that just from this batch of mushrooms, we could keep it going indefinitely if we wanted to. I bet you that would make for one happy little kid. Because each mushroom creates spores once it opens up, right? Right. And then the spores create the mycelin. And the mycelin, once you water it, when it's on a substrate, becomes mushrooms. And if you created just the perfect environment, all you'd have to do is tap them on the head and pick them and you'd have more come up. makes me excited. Well, I saw the pink ones and I had to do it because Lonnie's like, I want pink mushrooms. I'm like, do they have pink mushrooms? And the next day, here's pink mushrooms. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. She likes the color pink. She's always liked pink. Yes, but she also really likes purple, too. Well, pink and purple and red are her favorite colors. It's great. 
Oh, she uh, wanted to watch Dragon Tales earlier. Oh well, yeah, she called me. So that's something I always enjoy is introducing the kids to uh, new things. Oh, they got me to watch Nesla. I hadn't seen it before. I thought that was just a cute ass fucking movie. I liked it. I don't get into many of the kids' shows these days, but that one was really good. You know, Ro finds some really good ones, too. I, know. I think it's funny because they really like the uh, Japanese cartoons. They do. They prefer those over anything. Like Green Snake? Yeah. They just, they're, they're developing their own personalities at this point. No, well, they've always had them. They're just getting more... They're starting to learn more of what they like. And they're starting to be able to voice more of the things that they like. Oh, I thought that was cool earlier when Ron was trying to mimic the video. Yeah. That was great. She was watching a Minecraft video and trying to mimic what they were uh, building. Yeah, she sees me do it. We've done it together a couple of times. Um. She doesn't generally, for the bigger build, she doesn't have the attention span to sit and do the whole thing. But that's part of why I do it, and then she sees that she's got the example right there in front of her, and she'll go do it herself. I love it. She has some pretty cool stuff. I, I'm pretty impressed with some of the stuff she comes up with. I'm waiting for when she starts messing with the redstone. Well, she she's was, already doing it a little bit. Yeah, I was about to say, she's already starting. When she gets more into it, yeah. Yeah, I want to teach her how to make the elevator. That'd be entertaining. Well, you make an elevator with slime blocks and the uh, sticky pistons. Ooh. Yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. That sounds really cool. You do some of the most interesting things on Minecraft. I watch tutorials that show me how to do it. Yeah? Did I tell I mean, you- Okay. Did I tell you what I got into watching tutorials on? You're gonna laugh hysterically when I tell you. Right. So, just to make me seem more geeky, I started learning C Sharp. And it's kind of like mechanics. You do this who thing you do me and you add it with this one and then you gotta subtract this and make sure you add this and yeah. And it gets confusing after a while. Yeah, I don't do math. Good thing I'm a math was. Math is my nemesis. Math is my everything. <laughs> math is my nemesis. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Is that Kevin? Yeah. Thank you for coming out. Happy planting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see how well they do in Wyoming. I'm like, life, yay! You want some seeds? Come get some seeds. Dude, I think one of these years I'm gonna make the sunflower bombs and I'm gonna just carry them with me and throw them all over the place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have my hybrids, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> Mm, that's too funny. You're too funny. You know what, I've been trying to think of a good name for the big one. And, 
and I was just thinking the beanstalk. You know, like Jack's beanstalk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's also helped with the mushrooms as it's been so humid here. It has. It really has. You know, I think that, uh, learning to grow new things has been a fun adventure. Oh, it is. You know what? I'm weirded out, though. Hmm. Well, because I was looking up how to grow one of the seeds I got. Um, I got it a couple of years ago. Most seeds will stay for, I'll keep for a really long fucking time. So I was just kind of holding off on planting them. And then I go to find out how to plant them. And well, not only is it complicated, but I found out that the tree has since been put on the endangered species list. And part of the reason is because the seeds have a very low germination rate. Goodness. And now I'm debating whether I should even grow them, but then again, if I grow them, it would be one more in the world. You would. But then again, I can't do anything with it but grow it. And it's like literally illegal to cut them down or to sell them on the open market. But then again, two pounds of this wood is worth $6,000. So what do you do? Goodness, you put yourself in quite a conundrum. <laughs> well, no, I just wanted to grow the tree. Because A, I love the smell of it, and it's a beautiful fucking wood. And the one that I got is the more rare of the two species. I could believe that. So it's like, well, fuck, what do I do? And what happens if I grow it and I fucking kill it? I don't know. I'm part of the extinction problem. <laughs> Goodness, and I can see you saying that too. I would, I would cry. That's the bad part about it. I would absolutely cry. You'd be so distraught there would be no stopping it. Yeah, I would be very distraught. I'm worried that way. I can't help it. I think it's one of the more lovely things about it. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You know how bad I was just like screaming on the inside up until Pac put out that branch? I'm like, why did I do that? Why did I do that? I'm gonna fucking kill it. It's gonna fucking die. <laughs> I had to do it, but why did I do that? <laughs> I mean, Mom, you worry too much sometimes. You know what? Bonsaiing trees is traumatic. <laughs> Sounds like it. Oh, it's so worth it, but it is traumatic because you have to grow them for a couple of years before they start to really do anything do what you need them to do i mean most of your really pretty bonsai trees are anywhere from five to fifteen years old and that's why they're so fucking expensive but you grow attached to them you know you see them every day you care for them you get excited about their growth or at least i do i don't know about other people but i do my my puppers the peppers, yeah. The peppers, the peppers, the peppers, the peppers, the peppers. Peppers, peppers. Yes, I know. Ray and her peppers. I'm excited. I'm growing some fucking Carolina Reapers. I know. I want to mix them with my chocolate scorpions. Yeah. My ghost pepper. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Get a chocolate Carolina and ghost <coughs> reaper. Well, it would be something else. I think that there is a combination of that already, but 
you never know what you're going to get because you never know what genetics are going to pass over. Exactly. And the problem with hybrids is that they're not sustainable. True. But it's fun to make them. It would be like a rare thing. I kept telling you I want to make a purple white ghost pepper. And I know what two to put together to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Which two? You put that little purple one with the white ghost pepper and just keep in. Okay, so it takes two years to find out what they're going to look like and whatnot, right? Right. So the first one you do the white ghost pepper and that little purple one. Mm hmm. Because they're both hot, right? So you're going to keep your Scoville up. But it should lend some of the purple color to it, or it might turn it red. Yeah, that would be beautiful. Okay, so if you wanted it, and then when you want to change the color, you add more purple to the hybrid. And it's not necessarily going to work out anytime soon, but there is a possibility of making a purple Ghost pepper. Make mm. me excited for my peppers. And then the only way to truly keep the strain pure is to do clones. And speaking of peppers, I need to correct myself on something I said. Mm, what'd you say? There is two pepper plants that actually become trees and the rest of them are actually in the right zones are perennials and if you have peppers growing in your colder climates if you cut back all of the leaves and all of the all the greenery on it and leave the stems and winter them over they will come back and produce fruit the next year Mm, so, so they're more of a bush coming. than a plant. That means they have a lot of fun ahead of me. Well, like I said, you plant in numbers because, well, they're, you're fighting genetics, you're fighting conditions, you're fighting fungus, you're fighting bugs, you're fighting Kids. all of these <laughs> elements that could kill it. So you plant in numbers because... They're going to the weaker plants or plants that are infected with something are going to die off and leave you the stronger plants. It's just the natural. I mean, I've had plants that you've seen it. I've had cactuses that one day they're like, hey, I'm doing great. And the next day they melted. And you're like, what the actual living? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. You know what? Either way it goes, I'm okay. Well, I'm just saying, you can keep on going. And that's really cool. I think that's something I'm going to aim to do. Well, think about it. The bigger they get, the more of a crop you're going to get. The more of a crop I get, the more hot sauce I can make for all of it. Yeah. Now, I know I didn't grow any tomatoes this year, but you're not going to be probably making it this year. No, not this year. So, um, we grow the tomatoes next year. Mm-hmm. Do we have onion seeds? Yep. And shallots. Ooh. Do you think shallots would be good in salsa? Or not in salsa, in hot sauce? Maybe. It's a mild flavor. I don't know that you'd want to put it in there. I... It would overpower. Everything else would overpower it. I'm going to warn you now, I'm going to get two of those things that, like, finely chop things for you. And one of them's going to be for my peppers. And I will label it so that way you know. Yeah, I'm not going to help you with that. I'm not allowed around spicy food after today. <laughs> <laughs> that was so fucking ridiculous and it would only happen to me. <laughs> I'm fucking serious. My God. Um, tell them what happened. 
Do I have to? Do you want me to? It was so fucking ridiculous. It was great. Okay, so we have this restaurant out here called Chubby's. Well, it's El Chubby's. It's not Chubby's. There's two different ones. I don't know if the other Chubby's still exists anymore. But um, we used to go there when the kids were younger, and they have really good burritos. And they have this green chili that's great, but the hot is way too hot, and the mild is too bland, so you get them to mix them. And it's a perfect medium green chili, right? Mm -hmm. Well, on my burrito, they put the hot, the hot part of it on half of the burrito, <laughs> And the mild part on the other half of the burrito. So one of them is like, burn your ass fucking hot. <laughs> and the other one is like, we're, what the fuck? <laughs> and I take a bite. And I come across the seed. And some of the heat comes from the seed. So I spit the seed out, right? And I come across another seed. And I spit the seed out. And my eye itches. And stupid me doesn't realize you just had a fucking capsaicin fucking bomb in your hand and you're touching your face. <laughs> oh my god, that fucking hurt. Oh, the fucking oil from it is still a cooked seed. Still had enough capsaicin oil in it to get it on my fingers and burn my skin. And I, like, rubbed the under of my eye and, like, half of my face was, like, fucking burning off. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not allowed around spicy food anymore. <laughs> I, I, I'm not responsible enough to eat spicy food. <laughs> Obviously. But seriously, like, shit like that only happens to me. Like, fucking A, man. You know that it's going to fucking do that. <laughs> but hey, rub your eye anyway. <laughs> Goodness, Mom. <sighs> Sounds like you just have a bad time with scenes. Oh, dude, you know what? I have not made jalapeno poppers since the last time. Which was over ten years ago. Mind explaining? I don't know where the fuck these jalapenos came from, but they were hot as fuck. And, of course, I wasn't wearing gloves while I was cutting them and gutting them. So, my hands are all full of capsaicin oil. And guess who had to go to the bathroom? <laughs> oh! <God>. Yeah! <laughs> I feel your pain. Oh, and then I had it all over my face and I rubbed my lip and I'm like, what the? They were so fucking hot. They weren't even edible. Goodness. Yeah, I was, I was a miserable bitch that night. <laughs> oh my God, not where you ever want to get capsaicin oil. <laughs> and then in your eye and on your cheek and... Yeah, and you know what's funny is it gets on the back of your hand, too, and you don't realize it. So you're like, I'm going to be smart and not put my finger in my mouth. Oh, fuck, it hurts. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> that sounds awful. It is. Oh, my God. But you know that's why they make pepper spray out of capsaicin. Because if it comes in contact with your skin, it burns. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. But yeah, well, we were talking about that. We could make our own pepper spray too. Yep. Ooh, and you could be slick and call it ghost pepper spray. <laughs> ghost pepper spray. When you really gotta fuck a motherfucker up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that make if I use Carolina Reapers, that'd make a bunch of men cry. Oh, dude. I, I, I don't know if they have a limitation on... You've been hit by... You've been sprayed by a smooth pepper spray. Hey! You're fucking funny. <laughs> no, it's kind of crazy. Because it really wouldn't be that hard to make pepper spray. It burns, burns, And burns. I was telling Ray, you could be really super evil. 
and cold press the seeds and the white parts, which is where the capsaicin is, in a coconut oil, and people would wish they were dead. Because coconut oil absorbs really quickly, really deeply into your skin. And if that was infused with capsaicin... Ooh, where would I get the pepper spray jars? I gotta figure that out now. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm gonna call it bomb ass lady juice. I just straight up call it, fuck you. <laughs> Can I? No, it would be, nah, seriously, fuck you. <laughs> Can I call it that? So you can have a whole one. There could be, fuck you. There could be, like, seriously, fuck you. And there could be, nah, seriously, fuck you. And it's not about size, it's about potency. <laughs> no. no, 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 it should be, fuck you. Fuck you, fuck them. Fuck you, fuck them, fuck the dog too. No. I do not support spraying dogs with pepper spray. It was spray. a joke, Mom. I, I, <laughs> I didn't think that one all the way through. People sometimes, yeah. I think they may deserve it, but... Considering how sensitive dogs' noses are, and when you spray at them, it automatically goes up their nose. That is like the cruelest fucking thing in the world to do to a dog. I know. Okay, okay. Okay. Mom? Let's get off the topic of spraying dogs. Yeah. That kind of brings me down. Yeah, it does. Dude, let's stop talking about pepper spray. <laughs> so, anyhow. What you got? Uh, a brain. You sure? A tubaloo. And an ice cream machine. <laughs> So what did your friend say about the three things? Which three things? Do you remember? You gotta buy three things and your objective is to freak the cashier out. Do you remember that? I do remember that, but I don't remember what they said. Uh... Oh goodness. I know one of them was WD-40. <laughs> come up with the weirdest shit for that. Oh god, what was the first one? That's what brought it all together. Ah, I don't remember. So anyhow, have you learned anything interesting about the world lately? Um... What the fuck is going on? Okay. Oh, it's the Ah, <laughs> oh, she never do that. What? I do, I, I, I do, yeah. I am. Hey, I need your help. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I'm not that oh, one. yes, I do. <laughs> I'm just that crackle and pop at like Francis. So Lonnie has swiped one of my acacias. <laughs> yeah, she told me about that. She is completely obsessed with it. Yep. It's okay, I still have enough to do the forest if I get a one. And actually I planted her a whole bunch of them. 
Well, she said that's what she wanted in her box, so I gave her her acacias. Um, poor Pepe. I know, right? One. We're good. I take book plants very seriously. <laughs> yes, I do. clue you guys in on what's going on. And we're going to try to start streaming more. Because streaming is joyous. <laughs> You're cute. Yeah, what she said. And then some. But have a wonderful night, everybody. We hope to see you soon. We love you. Bye.